Alright, so we're here for Castnet 101. Uh, phase 1 and step 1 of Phase 1 is uh, getting your hands on a good Castnet. So like this one. Brand new Castnet in a bag, plastic bag. By the way, this is courtesy of my cousin George Wu of PIDC. Thank you for uh, this, George. So this one in particular is a Japanese uh, type of Castnet. This is the cord. This is the net, it's 12 feet long and the it's one inch or the mesh is one inch in size and it's Japanese because uh, see there's bottom pockets and this is what I really like about the Japanese nets. The lead is like a chain, it's a chain link uh, lead on the bottom so it's pretty well sealed when it gets to the bottom. So that's step one is to get your hands on a good net and a good net you can tell it's smooth in the hands, soft, smooth, and it's not bulky. So it doesn't get in the way when you're throwing it or casting. So that's step one. This net, my only critique for this net is a cord. This particular cord is pretty strong. It's like a huge uh, parachute, but it tends to tangle when it's in the bucket, the net is in the bucket, and you're rushing to get it, and it's not, uh, look at that, just, it just started to uh, tangle. You're in a rush to get the fish is there and you're in a rush and then this thing gets and ends up getting tangled and you have a hard time uh, if it's really tangled. So what I will do, uh, I guess we can say step two, after you get a good net is to modify the net uh, to improve it in whatever way you think uh, will improve it and I would improve this by, I'm going to change the cord, I'm going to change it to one of these. These are um, right, hollow braided cords. The good thing about these cords is that they float and they rarely uh, get tangled and even if they do get tangled it's really easy to uh, untangle them and it's also really easy to tie them up like so you just uh, slide the end into uh, the hollow in the braid and uh, the braid itself will when there's pressure it's going to hold on to that uh, end part of the rope inside the braid so i will do more on that when i uh, actually change the rope uh, or the cord i will uh, show you how to do that using especially this uh, very very nice light strong and uh, floating line so that's uh, those are steps one and two get your net get a net and modify the net to suit your needs or improve it and then uh, I suppose step three uh, will be how to load up the net and step four is how to throw the net and so forth so we'll get to those uh, at a later point all right, so uh, I haven't changed out the cord, uh, but I figured since there's still some daylight, I'll go ahead and uh, show you how to do uh, a step three, which is to load up the, uh, the net, uh, get it ready for casting. See, it's tangled again. But um, uh, there's, there's different methods to uh, loading up the net. Uh, and really, you should uh, pick what works best for you and, uh, and then utilize that. But it's good to know a couple more different uh, types of uh, how to load the net because sometimes it really uh, uh, the methods uh, uh, effectiveness uh, vary depending on the size of the net sometimes small nets you can just do a single hand throw uh, and then sometimes medium sized nets uh, you can get away with a, a quicker method of throwing it and then uh, heavier nets you have to load it up uh, in particular ways but anyway let me show you what I usually do uh, in almost all the nets I, I do, except the small. So you wind up the cord, put it on your wrist, wind up the cord evenly all the way, and even up to the net, you keep winding it like as if you were winding up, winding up the rope, doing that until you get to here where uh, it's right about around your waistline or your belt button around there. And then you transfer it to your left hand. And then what I want what you want to do is divide up the net into in half, into two equal portions. Like so, and I even, all right, and then roll it over your thumb. Now there's two different portions. Grab the weight uh, line, throw it on your shoulder, make sure it's open, then take this other side, or in this on the right shoulder, put your pinky around the lead line, hold the pocket, and then roll back the the half of the net into your hand. Then what I usually want to do is, I 
free up my thumb and my pointing finger and I grab the other half of the net here that way and then I put it in my left hand transfer it to my left hand so now they're both even left and right are even in distance and height some people just don't do that so it ends up like this you can do that that's fine and they throw it this way the problem with uh, with that for me is uh, it doesn't feel even that's number one and number two this is kind of set low so it can get caught in you know the sides of the boat as you're throwing it and that's why I like to grab it and make it shorter actually it's even now so it feels even and when you're throwing it it doesn't get caught and also you can throw it left or right depending on where the fish is moving so that's how I load this up uh, I'll probably do another one uh, with better lighting and and, and slower but uh, uh, that's how I do it for most of the, the nets I throw this see there's one point two three on my left shoulder and four on my right shoulder so there's four points uh, where the net opens. sometimes when I'm using my uh, sardine net and it's light lighter than this a little bit so I would just usually use uh, three points like that so it's a faster load so I have to put the other one on my uh, right shoulder it's a faster load that way uh, but then you end up you have to throw right instead of uh, throwing both ways. see that four point that I showed you right this is the first method uh, uh, that was taught to me by uh, Mr. Greg Doro years ago. And it's basically the four point that you just saw, but it's a different method of loading it. And the way he taught it uh, taught us was this. You just grab this, throw it on your right side, and then of course you have to transfer the net, and then you grab the other side, and you throw it here. And then that's when, and then usually they just like kind of grab the net and where you think it's the middle, and then they pull there and then they do that so again it's loaded four points right there same same setup different method of putting it together the reason why I move away from this to the one I used is because if you noticed all right to do this I had to first lift and grab the lead line and throw then I had to transfer this to my other hand and grab the lead line and throw and this is carrying this too and then I could do this or I could do the other side but anyway I would have to transfer again and divide up the net into two all the while I've been carrying this heavy weight and then transfer again and carry this and so on and so forth so I've been carrying the lead line the heavy weight the whole time I've been loading up again compare it to my uh, my modified method of getting to those four points my method I don't have to take out the thing from my wrist so there we go the wrist wrap so this again my method it's actually a lot of people do this too but uh, I guess the very last step or two is I can, just kind of came I just figured it out anyway so so it's on the ground I'm not lifting it I just put it there and then I start splitting it Roll it over my thumb, there. Then take the one end of the lead line, throw it on my left. That's why I start to lift. Left, right, lead line, roll back, grab that, other half, put it in my left hand. I loaded up four points. I did, I did little lifting or half the lifting the whole time. And I can throw left or right, that's that how to load up it's very important to load up uh, properly because otherwise she, it's not gonna open up and I said that uh, I was going to change the cord so that's uh, why we're here pretty strong cord and then at the end they have this um, o-ring uh, that's supposed to be for the, the wrist so I might use that so first I have to take this out just gonna get a razor and cut the smaller uh, line that's holding it together and then I'm going to switch it up to this uh, braided line. When you cut this braided line, th there's going to be a lot of strands. And if you have a hot knife, uh, you can get a, a clean cut like that. Uh, but if you don't have a hot knife, then you can just use a, a torch. And uh, you just burn it and then put, put on some gloves first. 
and then just burn it and then rub it uh, down and make it uh, nice and neat. You, you can see there's uh, a couple of uh, strands there. I'm gonna get rid of those if you start. Okay, we're done. We're done. Good. All right. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna cut this up and then uh, we'll uh, try and see if this will fit into this uh, swivel uh, hole. I think it can. All right. So I have a box cutter here. Um, and this the length of the rope uh, usually it's good around 20 to 25 feet uh, just in case you have to throw into uh, deep water or uh, you're going to be on a boat and the boat is going to be moving uh, but it's better uh, around 20 to 25 feet better longer than shorter so i'm going to cut this up sorry whoever was sewing this took a lot of effort maybe it was a machine and all but Raise your blade away, make sure you put it in, otherwise you're gonna damage your neck. Alright, let's see if this will fit in there. I, I hope so. So let's go. works, it works. Alright. So the good thing about the uh, braided rope is that you can you don't have to do any knots. So you just open up the uh, the braids like so. Then you slip this through. That's why it has to be nice and uh, cinched so there's no strands to like anyway. So that's one. You usually you want to do at least two but preferably three. That's two. Okay. That's three. braid only the one side of the braid like so you slip the end of the rope into the braid push the uh, tag end it's like a constrictor cord thing swallow up the tag end the more pressure there is on the on the rope being pulled the more these strands or braids uh, constrict the tag end so it doesn't come out there we go. Nice and neat. All right, so so when you buy your net, uh, it doesn't necessarily come with the container. Uh, that's what happened in my case for this net. It came in this plastic bag. That's it. So uh, what you want to do is, uh, for sure, you want to find a, a, a bucket for it five gallon bucket it might be too big it's going to take up a lot of space in the boat you want something that's a bit smaller you can always find those at a hardware store or you just go to the local baker and ask for empty containers like this gourmet pastry bavarian cream filling good sized bucket I just wanted to show you this other uh, type of net both in terms of the size of the mesh and the uh, the uh, lead line. This is uh, like an American type of, of, of net. The lead line uh, is not completely like a chain link. Uh, it's like separated by a couple inches along. And uh, the mesh is this is probably like a one fourth or so. Uh, this is meant for like sardines and pilchards and and, and uh, minnows and small uh, small big fish. This is uh, considered to be quite uh, a bit heavy because it's like a pound and a half per foot. Um, and it's good because the smaller the mesh, the more the drag and the slower it goes down. Um, uh, this is uh, an 8 footer, uh, so it doesn't really work well in deep water. I've tried it several times and you can actually just watch the fish uh, swim out, uh, away from it as it's going down. But if, if it's shallow enough, uh, when it works, oh boy, uh, it's going to get more fish than the Jap Japanese pockets because uh, this is called the horn. And then as you're pulling on the uh, uh, the cord, uh, pulling it, it's gonna put on pull on the lead line, and all those lead lines are gonna are cinched together, like they're gonna close up, and this whole net becomes one huge pocket. So sometimes when it gets uh, a good haul, uh, it, it's, it's a struggle to carry, uh, especially if you're up on the boat. If you're on the beach, you can drag it, but if you're up on the boat, 
Oh boy. Uh, you're gonna might need help to uh, pull it up. All right. I just wanted to show you this. This is my 12 footer uh, sardine uh, net. This is my old reliable. There's a brand new one. It's store and keeping it safe and unused until this is just totally uh, damaged basically. Uh, but this is my uh, sardine net. Uh, it's like again the Japanese style with the pockets on the bottom. You see I've torn it several times. Uh, you know, coral or whatever I uh, get gets caught down there or sometimes I end up uh, netting jacks for other big fish and they tear through the predator fish that are going after the sardines. They get in here, they just tear up the, uh, the net. But it's my old reliable, I've, I've used it many times. I, I always use it before I use any other net. And um, probably tens of thousands of fish have been caught by this net over the last few years. It's definitely a veteran, uh, has battle scars. Uh, it comes with this uh, uh, nice rope, cord. Again, it's the braided type, uh, so you don't have to change anything. This is a very nice large swivel, very good, stainless steel. Uh, but I'm gonna keep using it until you know it's basically inoperable, and then I'll open up the brand new one. All right, so this is the 12 footer or brand new uh, starting net. It's gonna stay in this bag. And it's gonna go into this bucket, and that's how it's gonna be for however long it takes. All right, guys. Good morning. It's six. And I woke up at 5.30 making coffee. I figured uh, we can start off early. Uh, it's a Friday morning, so let's do something before we go to work. I wanted to uh, show you uh, again how to load up the net slowly, step by step, uh, with good lighting, and how to throw it. And uh, I'm gonna show you the four points method again, and show you how to throw it right or left. Before we do the, uh, the loading up and throwing again, um, casting the net, I just wanted to show you my other net, which is actually my, this was my first net. And uh, I just wanted to show you how uh, some nets are not that great because they're really bulky. And so this is it. I mean, look at it, it's like huge. And when you load it, load it up, it's, uh, it's not the most friendly net to use because it's so bulky. Uh, it kind of gets in your face and everything when you're trying to look for the fish. So I just wanted to show you this, uh, actually tore it up uh, from before, but anyway. This is the kind of net that's not the best, but it was available at the time that I wanted to get one, and so I just got it, and uh, I used it for a while, and then it's now it's just uh, towed away. We're gonna again demonstrate the four points method. We're gonna try to do it as slow as I can, that you can see the steps. Uh, some people don't use the, the cord. I, I use it, actually very useful. So put on the wristband on your left hand. You coil the cord just like that. All the way to the net. You keep coiling it. All the way until you it's about again waist high. About waist high. Hold it like such. Then you split the net in half. Okay. Make sure the the angle is all the way flat downwards. And just split it in half. See there's a tangle there, so make sure that the, the lead line is not tangled. You keep doing that. There's another tangle there. That's why it's important to not just grab half of the net and split it. Because sometimes there, there might be some tangles, so that's why you have to do this. Alright, then you roll this half over your thumb, like so. Okay? And you grab the, the lead line towards your right. You grab this side that's nearest you. And throw it on your shoulder, your left shoulder, like so. And you take the lead line again throw it on your right shoulder, put the lead line in the pocket in your hand, transfer the one side of the net <coughs> over your, uh, to your uh, thumb and pointing finger like so. Then I would uh, again take out my, I would grab it with this finger and then Use my thumb and pointing finger to grab the other side of the net. Like so. 
transfer that into my left hand again and grab it like that. Then you open it up like that. Now you have four points. You can throw it right, you can throw it left. And uh, just to make it brief, uh, you'll, you've seen me in videos throwing it right. So it's just to show you that you can throw this left as well. So let's do that. That's uh, throwing it left. Could be better, but there we do anything with the net. First, when you're getting ready still, getting prepared for cast netting, you need a hat uh, for at least two reasons. One, uh, to keep the sun away from uh, your eyes. And number two is uh, to keep the sweat beads from rolling into your eyes uh, while, while your hands are busy. You won't be able to uh, uh, you know, clear your eyes. So you need the hat or a scarf or something for that purpose. You also need polarized sunglasses. So that way you can see um, through the water, see where the fish are. And you'll also need some booties. Uh, because if you're going to be going to the water, uh, you need those just in case there's sharp stuff in the water. Uh, so you need those as well. Uh, a few tips um, before we do anything. Uh, when you're stalking your uh, target species, uh, if they're near the, the shoreline, you want to kind of stay in the, in the shadow areas under any trees or or any other structures that you can hide under uh, and just kind of disguise yourself uh, there. Uh, that's one. Uh, another tip, before you throw the net, make sure you identify the bottom of the water to make sure there's no uh, corals or rocks or sharp things that are going to tear, tear up the net. So I gave you uh, another tip before saying that, uh, you know, when you're stalking the, your target species uh, and there by the shore, you should like try and hide like in the shadows or under some trees or standing around waiting for the fish uh, and with the heavy net uh, it can be a chore and it can be tiring so the next tip is gonna help you with that all right so you've been standing there you know stalking your uh, target species and it's kind of getting really heavy it's not a trick or tip just flip the weights on your shoulder and now it's easy just stand there so this is another tip when you're approaching your uh, the school of fish. Uh, I believe it's better to have the sun behind you because that way uh, they just see a silhouette of you if they see anything, anything. It's just like if you try to stare into the sun, it's hard for you to like really look at the sun because uh, it's so bright. And I think it's the same thing with the fish. Uh, it's hard for them to keep looking at where there's a bright sun. Uh, so they won't really see you other than maybe a silhouette. If you were the other way around, on the other side, it's like flashing a flashlight on you so they see you and your eyes. So that's why I, I, I think it's better to have the sun behind you when you're approaching your target. just me uh, transferring the, the rinsed net over to the, uh, the bucket with the uh, uh, fabric softener. One tip that I forgot to mention uh, about uh, not using uh, Joy or other uh, detergent is because uh, it can make, your, uh, make it brittle. Uh, that's another drawback. And, and, and related to that, uh, when you hang up your net, uh, which we'll do tomorrow, Try and keep it away from the sun because the sun, the ultraviolet rays, will also destroy the lines. All right. Okay, so this cooler is, there's beer in there. I got a fire. And I'm about to put on this uh, 
very fat uh, unicorn fish for barbecue. Uh, that said, one might ask, what's the whole point of me uh, doing this uh, cast netting 101? Some might say, why, why would you show the secrets of this type of fishing and so forth? At least for a few reasons, for a couple of reasons. First, um, my dad taught me uh, a lot of things, but I'm sure he, when he left uh, this earth, uh, also left with a lot of things that he didn't teach me. But in terms of uh, cast netting in particular, my uncle, his, my dad's brother, uh, Ubal Tele, he was uh, really good uh, with, with cast netting and everything. And he also departed this world, uh, uh, probably not teaching all that he knew. To I want to share what I learned, and, and I want to record it for my kids, especially. And uh, if they're not going to learn it, at least see what I enjoyed doing. Uh, might as well teach it thing or two for those who want to learn the, the cast netting. So that's that's why I, I'm doing this. And I'm not necessarily giving out all the secrets, you know, there's probably like 10% that I'm keeping to myself. So those, uh, those will not be recorded. One final point is uh, cast netting, sometimes you get a lot of uh, fish in the net. Uh, when that happens, uh, share your catch. Uh, but uh, when you get a good haul, just, you know, it's enough and let them leave them for another day, leave them for next year, leave them for the next generation. Sometimes I already have enough in the freezer, uh, so I would just go and sit around and look at the, the way the fish are moving and studying them and observing them and uh, I hope you would do that too. Uh, enjoy nature. So, cheers. All right, guys, so the uh, net has been soaking overnight in uh, fabric softener. Now we're going to hang it up, and this will probably be our last, uh, last part of our uh, uh, how to take care of the net. So uh, let's hang it up. All right, so the, the net is hanging up now, and you actually don't want it to be uh, hanging tight by the, uh, the lead line like that, because that will tighten up the knots throughout the net, it's going to get stiff. So you want it to be hanging as such, uh, with some slack, and then and then you want to open it up, spray it out. So you want to spray it out as such, so it can it, uh, it can dry up easier, uh, especially with, if there's wind, it's going to dry up really fast. Uh, and, and it's not hanging by the lead line, uh, so it's nice and, and loose. And as soon as it's dry, Roll it up, put it in the bucket, and then store it for later use. All right. I hope you enjoyed this Castnet 101 uh, film. Uh, I hope you learned something. And one other thing that I didn't mention last night, make sure you know, be aware of the, um, if there's any size restrictions on your target species or if there's any seasonal restrictions on those uh, before, you, uh, before you go get some fish. Once again, good luck, enjoy, and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. See you next time.